Hi everyone. In this video, I will be providing a demonstration of Poisson regression with multiple predictors using Stata. And before I get started, I do want to mention that underneath the video description, you will find a link to the Stata data file that I'll be working from. So you can download a, a copy of the data to follow along. And uh, you'll also find a uh, PowerPoint that I put together that provides some additional details that you might find useful, uh, particularly as you're trying to uh, interpret uh, various pieces of the output. So um, at any rate, uh, the example that we're going to be working from is based off of that provided by Long and Freeze um, 2014 in their book, Regression Models for Categorical Dependent Variables Using Stata. So in their discussion of Poisson regression, they provide uh, an example uh, where the researcher is trying to predict the number of articles written by an individual in the three years prior to receiving uh, the person's PhD. So the dependent variable in that uh, example was uh, essentially a count outcome, basically a count of the number of articles written during the last three years of graduate school. The independent variables included uh, gender identification. Uh, that variable was called female, and it's coded zero for male and one for female. Uh, the married variable is essentially an indicator of whether an individual uh, was married or non-married uh, at that time. And so uh, basically it's coded zero for not married, one for married. Uh, then we have kid five, that variable is referring to the number of kids less than six uh, that a person had. Uh, the mentor variable refers to the mentor's number of articles. So uh, you, you can imagine that graduate students, you know, when they're working with mentors and so forth, uh, mentors are publishing and so forth. So essentially, it's just the number of articles uh, a mentor had. Uh, and then we also have a measure of PhD prestige, and this was treated as a continuous variable. So let's go ahead and open up Stata and begin running our analysis. Okay, so here we are, and uh, in terms of the variables in our data set, let's just kind of briefly highlight them. We have this art variable right there. That's the number of articles. That's our count outcome. The female variable right here, that's gender identification, coded zero for male, one for female. We have the married variable right here, coded zero for not married, one for married. Uh, kid five was the number of kids less than age six, and then we have PhD, prestige, and then also this mentor variable right here, uh, referring to the mentor's number of articles. So in terms of carrying out the analysis, we can go to statistics, go down to count outcomes, and click on Poisson regression. So for the dependent variable, we will select art. For the independent variables, we'll select female, married, kid five, PhD, and mentor. Now, the female variable and married variables, uh, both of those are binary variables. Um, essentially, they're nominal variables. Uh, some folks might, uh, might uh, ask why not just include the uh, I dot prefix to denote these variables as factor variables. But really, whether we do that or whether we leave these uh, as they are, it's not going to uh, make any difference in terms of the out uh, the output. Okay, so the coefficients are going to be exactly the same. Uh, where we might want to treat these as factor variables uh, would be in the context where we have uh, three or more categories um, with our with our uh, our categorical variables. So at any rate, uh, the other thing I want to mention too is if you click under reporting right here, there are two options in terms of reporting uh, the coefficients. So one, uh, by default, it says report coefficients. Uh, the other option right here is reporting on incidence rate ratios. So we're going to uh, stick with the first option for the time being, and we'll click on OK to generate our output. So as we're looking at our output, there are two uh, general uh, things to kind of consider. There's the overall model fit, and then there's the uh, the contributions of the individual predictors in terms of uh, predicting the count outcomes. So you'll notice that up here, we've got a likelihood ratio chi-square 
uh, test value, the 183.03, and then we have the p-value for uh, this likelihood ratio chi-square uh, test. So the likelihood ratio chi-square uh, test is essentially testing whether uh, the fit of our models that can, uh, uh, the fit of our full model containing all of our predictors represents a significant improvement in fit relative to a null or intercept only model. So basically that null model is one that contains no predictors and is only including the intercept. So because this is statistically significant, uh, that would be an indication that our model does represent a significant improvement in fit relative to uh, an intercept only model. You'll also notice too that we've got the pseudo R square value down here, the 0 0.0525. And basically what this is reflecting is the proportionate improvement in fit relative to an intercept only model. Now, the pseudo R square value is not computed uh, in the same way that you would compute um, the R square value in the context of least squares regression. So, in the context of least squares regression, R square represents a proportion of variation accounted for um, in the dependent variable by the uh, set of predictor variables. Um, with respect to the pseudo R square value, it's not reflecting proportion of variance accounted for, but rather it's a, a reflection of the proportionate improvement in fit uh, of our full model relative to a null model. And so it's actually calculated by using the model deviances from our full model and uh, an intercept only model. So I'm not gonna go, go into the calculation of that uh, right here, but uh, that's just kind of how to think about it. So it's not interpreted as proportion of variation accounted for uh, like you might be used to in the context of linear regression. So in terms of our coefficients right here, the regression coefficients, these are basically reflecting the predicted change in the log count um, uh, for the number of articles uh, per unit increase on our predictor variables. So notice the terminology that I'm using, the log count. So we're not modeling the count outcome as a linear function of, uh, of our predictor variables, but rather there's a transformation involved and so now, the, in terms of the uh, literal interpretation of the coefficients, they would be reflecting the predicted change in the log count um, per unit increase on uh, a given predictor, you know, holding the other predictors constant. So if that kind of troubles you or bothers you, you can also think about, just generally speaking, the sign of these coefficients. And a positive value generally is going to indicate, for, for a given predictor, is generally going to indicate that uh, as values on the predictor increase, so does the predicted or expected count of uh, the number of articles that uh, were written. If the coefficient is negative, then that would basically be a signal that uh, for you know each increment on the predictor variable, uh, there would be a predicted decrease in the uh, expected number of articles uh, that are written. But again, just kind of keep in mind the difference between that sort of general conceptual discussion that our conceptual uh, framing that I'm providing and the literal framing which is reflecting the change in the log count. So there is a difference there. So as we're looking at the uh, female variable right here, you can see that the regression slo slope is negative. Uh, and we also see that there's our Z value right there and our P value right there. So we see that uh, the gender identification variable is a significant negative predictor. So that's kind of getting back to that general framing I was talking about. That's an indicator that uh, essentially uh, uh, females who are coded one um, are predicted to uh, have fewer uh, articles written during that three-year period than male uh, students. So that's um, how we would interpret that. Then we've got the married variable right here. Remember, it's coding. Uh, basically, zero indicated not married, one indicated married. So because this coefficient is positive, uh, and we also see it's statistically significant at the conventional 0 0.05 level. Because it's positive, though, that coefficient is indicating that uh, the married students um, were predicted to 
um, have more uh, articles written during that three-year period than unmarried students. When we look at the KID5 variable right here, we see a negative regression slope. We also do see that we have statistical significance there. So basically that negative slope there is telling us that uh, an individual with more kids under six were predicted to write fewer uh, papers or articles than uh, an individual with more with um, with uh, fewer kids. So basically, if you had more kids, you're going to write fewer articles. If you had fewer kids, you're going to write more articles. So then we've got the PhD variable right here. We see that it's, po it's uh, a positive slope there, but you'll also notice that it is non-significant. So uh, we'll move on to the mentor uh, variable right here. You can see that the regression slope is 0 0.0255, so it's a positive slope. And we also see that this predictor is statistically significant. So basically individuals with mentors who wrote, um, who uh, had more articles um, that were um, written and I assume published, um, also tended to um, write more articles during that three-year period. So that's kind of the way uh, to think about that. So next, what I want to show you is that we can go back and go to count outcomes again, plus on, and let's go and click under reporting, and let's set this to report incidence rate ratios. So remember that previously we were talking about uh, the uh, regression coefficients uh, uh, essentially reflecting the change uh, in log counts. Uh, per increment on a predictor variable. So now we're going to use incidence rate ratios in our reporting. So the significance tests and everything are going to be exactly the same, but the interpretation is a little bit different. So we'll go ahead and click on OK right here. And you'll notice that, uh, you know, going back to our likelihood ratio, chi-square, p-value, and pseudo-r-square, all those are exactly the same. When we look at the predictor variables, um, the significance test, all those are the same. So the only real difference that we're working with right here from an interpretive standpoint is that now we have incidence rate ratios. And basically what these are referring to is the uh, multiplicative change um, in the incidence rate or the predicted count for the number of articles written per unit increase on a predictor variable. So as we're looking at our first uh, predictor here, our female predictor, you'll see that the incidence rate uh, ratio is 0.7988. And that basically indicates that um, the number of articles written by females was point, roughly 0.8 times that of the number of articles written by males. And so because that number, that incidence rate ratio is less than one, that's again, referring to the fact that females are, uh, are predicted to write fewer articles than males. Uh, then when we look at the married predictor variable right here, the incidence rate ratio is 1.1679. And because that value is greater than uh, one, that's actually indicating, again, given the coding of our married variable, that uh, individuals who are married um, are uh, about 1.1679 uh, times, uh, the number of articles written by individuals who are married uh, is about 1.1679 times that of the number of articles written by individuals who are not married. So in other words, if you are uh, were married, then you tend then you were predicted to write more articles. The kid variable right here, you'll see that we've got the uh, incidence rate ratio of 0 0.831. So essentially, um, you know, basically for uh, each additional kid under um, under six, the predicted number of articles that were written changed by a factor of 0.831. So in other words, again, having more kids under six translated into um, a, a fewer predicted articles that were written. Then we've got our, our PhD uh, 
uh, variable right here, again, this was non-significant, so there's really not much to say about that. When we look at the mentor variable, we also see that this incidence rate ratio was 1.02587. And again, it was significant, and because that is greater than one, that's signifying that essentially um, uh, individuals with mentors who with more articles also tended to uh, be predicted to have more articles. So um, I will mention too that if you're a little bit more of a purist and you're not really a fan of the drop down menu option, um, you can use uh, syntax. Uh, the syntax, actually, we already generated up here, but you can either type it down in the command line or you can use uh, a do file. I'll just qu kind of quickly show you. Uh, I'll click on the do file editor option right here. And uh, down here, we can just type in uh, Poisson. That's the uh, our function name, if you will. And then we'll type in the name of the dependent variable. Then uh, we'll type in female, married, kid five, uh, PhD and mentor right there. So basically these are all the independent variables. The dependent variable is uh, this art variable right here. If you highlight this and click on the um, execute selection button, you'll see that we get our output. Uh, if we wanted uh, want to get the uh, incidence rate ratio, you can obviously uh, retype it or we could have just added it uh, just a second ago. But really all we need to do is add a comma and then IRR and uh, highlight this and click on uh, execute selection and we get the incidence rate ratios as well. So that's going to kind of wrap up the main thrust of this uh, discussion. As I mentioned before, um, underneath the video description, you'll find a link to the PowerPoint uh, presentation that goes into a lot more detail uh, regarding uh, interpretation of our output. And so if you want to kind of uh, study up on the wording, that's that's uh, not a bad idea either. So that, uh, again, I'm going to wrap this up and I appreciate you watching.